Want to know three of the best things you can do to burn body fat? Well, stick around, because I'm going to show you what the three best things are and the science behind why they work. Okay, so ready, set, go. Let's dive right in. So number one, exercise. Now you're about to say, well, no shit. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, let me tell you something you don't know. I used to watch hundreds and hundreds of people come into my gym in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. And their main goal was to burn body fat. So no matter what program, no matter what I showed them to do for a workout, they would mostly, like many of us, focus on two things. Burn calories and not taking in as many calories. In other words, they'd try and starve themselves and they'd get on the treadmill and run their butts off in hopes of burning enough calories to burn off that fat. Well, if any of them stayed for any length of time, they, they pretty much found out that they pretty quickly plateaued in that program. And the reason they did is because two things happened. One, you can only run so much before you finally have to give it up. And number two is their metabolism would actually slow down because they're starving themselves in an effort to quickly lose fat, their metabolism senses that starvation and actually goes into self-protection mode and shuts down. So they've got opposing activities happening there that aren't effective. Instead of looking at exercise like most of us do in terms of how many calories it burns, well, let me, let me address this too. You can, if you work out hard for an hour, you may be gonna burn 400 calories. So if you do that two or three times a week, you know, what is it, 1200 calories or so? It's just not that significant. You just aren't gonna lose a lot of body fat that way. It's helpful, don't get me wrong. It's not like you shouldn't do it, but it's not where you should be focused. Instead, if you look at exercise in terms of how it makes your body adapt, and what does that adaptation do, you might change the way you look at exercise. So the reason it's important to look at how your body adapts to exercise is that a faster metabolism is in long term is going to do you more good than just trying to manually burn off as many calories as you can. If your metabolism goes into higher gear and is constantly burning more calories, even when you're sitting here like I am right now, you're going to be a lot more effective and have a lot more long term sustainable way of maintaining your weight and even losing body fat. So what kind of exercise actually helps increase your metabolism? The answer to that question is resistance exercise, weight training. The adaptation that's caused by running is that you can run farther. Your, your lungs get greater capacity, your heart gets greater capacity, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Those are great benefits to have. But when it comes to fat loss, more muscle equals more calories burned on a day-to-day -day basis. So resistance exercise, in other words, stressing the body with some form of progressive resistance that gets a little more difficult each time you try it, will stimulate your body to adapt to that stress. And the, and the adaptation is that you'll grow more muscle. You have to give your body adequate time to recover from the exercise, and then you have to give yourself an additional amount of time to not only recover, but to build back just a little bit stronger, to gain a little bit of muscle. And by doing that, you're gonna be building your, your metabolic furnace and it's gonna help you burn fat in the long run. So number two on our list is keeping insulin levels low. Insulin tells our body what to do with glucose in the bloodstream. If there's too much glucose in the bloodstream, insulin deposits it, helps it deposit as fat throughout the body. It helps us maintain our energy levels, keeps, keep our blood sugar stable. Insulin spikes whenever we eat a meal that's loaded with carbohydrates. And if you do that often enough, you not only get fat, but your body gets resistance to insulin. And eventually you end up with other health problems like type two diabetes and potentially lots of other health problems. So keeping insulin low helps with fat loss because it helps us not add to the pile of fat that we're trying to lose. So how do you do that? How do you keep insulin levels low? Well, one of the first things you do is be mindful of how many carbohydrates you're taking in, especially carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates like sugars. But the ones people don't think about too much are things like breads, pasta, things made from grains, 
even potatoes will spike your insulin just because they digest so quickly and, and become sugar in your blood. Myself personally, I've found a tremendous benefit from not eating, really trying to cut most breads and pastas, all based, grain based products out of my diet. Not only is it easier to control weight, it seems like there's a lot less inflammation involved and the older you get, inflammation becomes a bigger and bigger factor in your life too, so you know what I'm talking about. Another great thing you can do to reduce insulin is to minimize the amount of time every day that your body is taking in calories and having to process foods. Every time you eat a meal, your body has to deal with whatever it is you're digesting. And if there's carbohydrates in there, if they're simple carbohydrates especially, your body's going to have to make an adjustment and insulin is one of those things that's going to, it's going to spike. So if you can reduce the window of time that you're eating, it gives your body a lot bigger window of time to not have to worry about insulin going up and down. So your insulin stabilizes, even reduces, and your body has a much better chance of using fat for energy. And that's your goal. One of the things you're trying to do is use fat for energy. And as long as there's a bunch of insulin in your system, it's gonna prevent your body from using fat from energy. And in fact, it's gonna deposit more fat. There's lots of studies available on this subject. Um, there's a couple of them published on the NIH website, National Institute of Health website, and it's called the ketogenic diet, the sleeping giant in weight loss. Very important study, very good information. I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can check that one out. So number three on the hip parade is eat more protein. You should include protein in every meal and every snack. Since we've already discussed that the goal of your exercise program should be to build muscle, protein helps not only increase your metabolism, but it helps support muscle growth and repair. And because of that, you should focus on protein as one of the most important macronutrients that you consume. As we age, our bodies get less and less efficient at using protein, so we actually need more protein as we get older than we did when we were younger. A good target would be a little more than a half a gram per pound of body weight or around 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, whichever way you want to look at it. So that means a person who weighs about 150 pounds should try and get maybe somewhere around 90 pounds or 90 grams of protein per day in general. A little bit more wouldn't hurt. Better to err on the side of, of safety. Another great benefit of protein is it satisfies your hunger. So if you're getting protein in every meal and every snack, you're less likely to feel the need to go binge out on donuts or something that's gonna sabotage your diet program. So those are three relatively simple things you can do and they're the best strategies for burning body fat long term. But there's one more thing that you have to keep in mind. Fitness isn't a goal. You don't get a medal and get to go into the winner's circle and call it a day and now you've achieved fitness and now you can just go on about your merry way and everything's gonna be fine. If you do think there's a finish line, then you'll kind of go into the winner's circle, adapt to the victory party, and pretty soon you'll be adapting back to that lifestyle and you'll be right back where you started. Fitness is a lifestyle. Instead of looking at fitness as a finish line, look at yourself as a fit person. If you believe yourself to be a fit person, your actions and choices will reflect that belief and your health, your lifestyle, your fitness will benefit as a result. Thanks for watching.